Today we're diving back into the world of operational amplifiers, commonly known as op-amps, with the help of Burson Audio. Now these little components are fundamental in electronics and they power everything from audio equipment to complex instruments. And now Burson Audio has released a new series of them, the V7s. Well, hello there and welcome back to another video here on Anton's Hardware. Op amps, what are these little things? Well, an operational amplifier, or op amp in short, is a tiny electronic component that's like a supercharged mini amplifier. It takes in electronic signals from one or more sex sources, boosts them up, and then sends them out as bigger signals. It's commonly used in all sorts of electronic devices like audio equipment, sensors, and even everyday gadgets like smartphones. Basically, it makes an electronic signal stronger and more useful for doing things in circuits. And this is great news for headphones. Usually the output of a digital to analog converter is too weak for headphones to use, so amplification is needed, and that's where the op amps come in. But not every op amp is the same, especially when you listen to audio. Different op amps have their own sonic characteristics, often referred to as sound signatures. For example, some op amps may produce a warmer or smoother tone to the audio, while others may sound more analytical or detailed or with a wider sound stage. Because these sound signatures are highly personal, Audiophiles and audio engineers often experiment with different op amps to find the desired sound quality in their audio systems. Although being part of an entire ecosystem, even a single high quality op amp can significantly enhance the performance of an audio system by reducing distortion, improving clarity, and enhancing the listening performance. And this is where the V7 op amps from Burson Audio come into the picture. So who is Burson Audio? Well, Burson Audio is an Australian company founded with the aim of creating high quality audio equipment that enhances your listening experience. They are well regarded within the audiophile community for their commitment to designing their own op amps with a different building philosophy. They don't use the conventional methods, but use a more hi-fi focus. Like with the V5i, which is a pioneer in the world of op amps. Known for their exceptional clarity and musicality, they gained a loyal following among audio enthusiasts. The V5i op amps offered a huge improvement in dynamics and the soundstage, and also transparency with better detailing over a lot of other standard op amps. They were game changers in the world of audio enhancement. And after some years of development, Burson released the V6 Vivid and the V6 Classic, an improvement over the V5. The Vivid is known for its energetic and dynamic sound signature, making it ideal for those who enjoy a lively and engaging listening experience. And then you have today's subject, the V7 Vivid, the latest in the line of discrete op amps. The V7 builds on its success of the predecessors like the V5 and the V6. It offers even lower distortion, higher resolutions and greater transparency. The V7 is designed to push the boundaries of audio performance, delivering exceptional clarity and detail, or at least on paper. And on paper, Burson has made a nice overview on the differences between all these op amps. Here you can see the more than average NE5532 op amps on the left. They come standard with the Playmate 2 when you buy it. Next is the V5i, the V6 Vivid, and then the new kits in town, the V7 Vivid and the V7 Classic. The shell of the V7 is metallic, where the V6 was plastic. And the main reason the V7 has a metallic shell and not plastic is because it gets hot. I mean, really hot. I measured 55 degrees Celsius on its surface, but the data sheet says it can reach 60 degrees Celsius. But it's supposed to do that. As Burson Audio themselves say, the V7 is engineered to operate at high temperatures. And then mention that the shell is designed in such a way to dissipate heat effectively. 
This of course is all very interesting, but what does this mean in real life? Let's head over to Rightmark to see if the differences are real. To get the best results for testing, I got my trusty Playmate 2, the Supercharger, also by Burson, and for testing purposes, the Audio Quest, Forest, and the Tower cables that I used some videos ago. Of course, I wanted to do the testing with the standard NE5532 op amps, but after inserting them in the correct op amp slot, they refused to operate. I was a bit annoyed by this because uh, it would show if changing your op amps does make a difference. Next up is the V5i op amps, which I do own, but I only have four duals and the Playmate 2 needs two singles and two dual op amps. I've asked Burson if they were so kind to send me two V5 single op amps, but when recording this video, I still haven't heard back from them. So what kind of comparisons can I make? Well, I do have two single V6 Vivids and two duals. And the infographic from Burson said there should be a small improvement, albeit small. So I fired up Rightmark Audio Analyzer, and these were the results it provided. Although the differences are minute, the V7 is better on every front. The noise level has decreased a little, as does every other test. The total harmonic distortion has improved considerably, and so does the intermodular distortion plus noise. So changing such a little component has a distinct impact on the overall performance. But I'm not overly impressed by these results. It's not a huge leap forward like from the standard NE5532s to say the V5 or the V6. So will you be able to hear the differences then? That's what something that I will talk about in the listening sessions. Okay, for our listening sessions, I normally put on a pair of headphones and I can easily hear any difference in quality. You spot the tones that are drowned in the background noise, you can hear uh, annoying tones even more, and the sound stage could as well be mono. Yes, there are some differences, but almost never to such an extent that I'm blown away. Today was not one of those normal days. I was blown away. The V7 shines even more than the V6, and I already love the V6 Vivid. The details were so immensely precise. The transparency was a leap forward, and the soundstage was, well, nearly perfect. I just couldn't find anything wrong with the V7. Okay, um, maybe the only thing that I could find was that the bass was on some rare moments somewhat overpowered-ish. But I can also rephrase that to saying that the Playmate 2 can now easily drive any headphones I own without any problem. Because that's what I heard. Okay, and now for my conclusion. Uh, the regular vanilla version of the Playmate 2 is already very good. It was already the best sound card digital to analog converter that I owned even before getting the V6 or the V7. But using the V7 op amps will make the Playmate 2 the undisputed winner of audio in gaming. In my opinion, the V7 is a definitive upgrade of any audio system that has the ability to swap op amps. Together with the Burson Supercharger and the V7 op amps, the audio of the Playmate 2 generates uh, the peak that the Playmate 2 can reach. And, on, uh, and I enjoyed every second of it. It was like the Playmate 2 was playing with the audio only for my personal maximum enjoyment. Even though I thoroughly love the op amps, I'm still wondering if I would recommend them. And that is because I've left the realm of an ordinary gamer and entered the hi-fi realm. A gap that the Playmate 2 wants to bridge by providing hi-fi audio to gamers. But it does so at a considerable cost. The Playmate itself costs a whopping 500 euros. And if you want to upgrade the audio with the V7, you need to pay 258 euros for just the op amps. If you want to upgrade it to the max, I recommend the Supercharger, which will set you back another 261 euros for the 3 amps version that I have. 
a large amount of money for an average gamer. And I'm not sure if you want to invest that kind of money in audio. My guess is that you'd rather spend your euros on a better CPU or GPU than audio. But if you want to upgrade your audio and you want to fiddle around with swappable op-amps, consider getting the Playmate 2 with the V5i op-amps. Two V5i duals will cost you 73 euros and two singles 55 euros and they are already a really good investment that will improve your audio. Also keep in mind that you don't need to change your audio setup as often as you may need to change your CPU or GPU it will outlast your gaming rig. And if you have the money to spend, the V7 coupled with the Playmate 2 and the Supercharger will give you the ultimate audio experience in gaming. And with this ending, I would like to thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video, and I'd like to see you in the next one. See you then, bye bye!